It was a magical place, magical moments, great games, great people, great memories. When Stoker got cranked up, it was, it, it was really an exciting place to be. Back in the Ernie and Bernie days, you can't imagine being anyplace else. It was like a darn circus. Is what it was like. Everybody had their own role. The players had their role. The cheerleaders had their role. The band and and uh, the Orange Clyde Club. Everybody got in on the act at the circus, so to speak. It was um, it was a very special time. It was uh, it was like a family. You know, it was just a great atmosphere, and the people were right on the floor. You just felt like you were part of the game as a spectator. It was the social center for so many different things. Anything that was big was in Old Stokely. Lots of great memories uh, live within those walls and lots of great sounds and lots of great cheering. You know, you probably ask anybody that's spent as much time in that gym, that's, that's just a lot, of, a lot of great memories, a lot of um, special moments there um, in that building. It's, it's hard to think that it's all gonna come crashing down. In 1958, the University of Tennessee opened the Armory Fieldhouse, a 7,800-seat arena that succeeded the old Alumni Memorial Gym. A few years later, in 1962, the Vols hired Ray Mears to coach the men's basketball team. And once Coach Mears came into town, things changed immeasurably in Tennessee basketball. The basketball arena was the Armory Fieldhouse. The Armory Fieldhouse, in essence, was doubled in size two years after Coach Ray Mears came here as the head coach. From 1963 on through 1965-66, he did nothing but win. And the Fieldhouse was full every night, 7,500 fans. And that's when Mr. Stokely came in and gave the money to have Stokely Athletic Center built in his honor. Well, I was glad that my father had uh, chosen to make that investment in the university. I, I think it paid dividends for the, for the university and for the athletic program there. The donation made by William B. Stokely Jr. was instrumental in the renovation of the arena. Sadly, he died before construction was complete. William B. Stokely Jr. was in town and I met him and took him inside Stokely. We were walking around construction down there where he could see how it was going to be. Then the sad part of this is he, he never got to see a game there, but he did get to see it and he looked over at me and said, looked up and looked around, he said, Charlie, do you think we'll ever fill it? <laughs> In October 1966, the newly renovated field house, now with a capacity of 12,700, reopened as Stokely Athletic Center. The biggest tradition at Stokely was winning. It was just one of those deals where everything meshed right from the beginning. Mears had started winning. He won the SEC the first year he was uh, in Stokely. Losing was not something that you ever expected as a player under Coach Mears. It was a matter that you just went out, you knew what your job was, you did that job, and winning the game was in no question. It was just a matter of how much are we going to win this game by. We knew that Coach Mears, you know, he had a program that he had built up and the tradition that we had as, uh, as, as the University of Tennessee basketball was something that, that we became very, very proud of. It was just a great sports venue. And that, that when that was fully packed, and it was packed most of the time, it was a very intimidating court for other teams to come play on, so the intensity was always at a high level. Mears was a trailblazer. I mean, he took basketball, which was nothing, a 4-19 team, and, uh, and won three conference championships and uh, created excitement. In his 15 seasons as head coach, Ray Mears won 89% of the home games Tennessee played at Stokely. But it wasn't just his winning record that stood out. Ray Mears was crazy. He could win basketball games, but he'd have, to have somebody out there wrestling a bear or a, one of his basketball players on a unicycle. You, you, you came to see something other than 
the basketball game. You know, we had uh, Harlem Globetrotter uh, drills before the game started, and the band went around to the court, and the Orange Tie Club was over here, and Andy Holt was sitting over there behind the goal, and the students were over here, and uh, it, was, uh, it, it was like a big family. Whether it's dribbling, or ball handling, or passing, or layup drills, and it was all done to that sweet Georgia Brown, you know, whistling song. Coach Mears at the time was uh, basically the Barnum and Bailey of college basketball. And it was truly a, a circus-like atmosphere. So in terms of his promotion and his marketability, he truly was second to none even on a national scale. Many of the well-known Tennessee traditions were born under Ray Mears. Athletes running out through the tee, coaches wearing orange blazers, and even Big Orange Country, a phrase coined by Mears himself. This is Big Orange Country became a place to be. And to be there, you had to react because you were fortunate enough to be in the place. This is what created the fervor for Tennessee basketball that brought enthusiasm to it. It's impossible to think of Stokely without thinking of iconic radio announcer John Ward, known to many as the voice of the Vols. There were times that people would wear their, their uh, portable radios, the, the headsets, in Stokely so they could hear what Ward said. Ward was a true genius behind the microphone. Give it to him! Jackson with the bonus, the sophomore. Swish! Tennessee by five. Kentucky with the ball into Johnson. John Ward was a perfectionist at painting a picture for everybody. You know, he could, he could describe the arena out there and everybody could sit in their living room and see that arena. My gosh, uh, you know, his, his phrase, bottom, so that's one of the more recognized phrases throughout the University of Tennessee sports. In the mid-1970s, Ernie Grunfeld and Bernard King, two of the greatest basketball players in Tennessee history, had Stokely routinely packed for the Ernie and Bernie show. The combination of two New Yorkers in East Tennessee at Stokely Center playing basketball was just whoever wrote this story. Double Trouble in Tennessee. Bernard King was, was an exceptionally quick basketball player and he would get the ball inside and the ball would be up on the board and in. And Ernie was so muscular and so, so such an aggressive player, he'd go to the line 10 or 12 times a game. So they were a perfect complement to each other. And they just took, took our program to another level uh, as far as the quality of play and then the recognition that the team got throughout the country. It was, it was a perfect time. I mean, it, they talk about the, how everything falls together. That, that's when it fell together. While Tennessee athletics was an enormous part of its history, Stokely will be remembered as more than just a sports venue. It was home to camps, graduations, and ROTC. There was a heavyweight boxing match between John Tate and Mike Weaver in 1980, and there were performances and concerts aplenty, from Janis Joplin to Elton John to Elvis, who played his final show in Knoxville three months before his death. It's difficult to realize what Stokely meant to the community. We've got so many great venues now where you can see large numbers of people. If it was to be a big event, is held in Stokely. I was uh, an usher on the floor uh, one night when Elvis was there. You know, you got to hear those immortal words from Ed Hill, Elvis has left the building. There were uh, uh, several big name acts that, that came to Stokely. I, I love concerts, and, um, but I will say um, the root of all that started with, with Stokely. It was cozy. It was, um, uh, it made you feel like you were part of the game or the show or whatever was going on. In 2012, officials announced that Stokely Athletic Center would be vacated by the end of the year. Demolition on the historic arena is scheduled to begin in May 2014. You know, that building has uh, been very, uh, uh, I don't know, been part of my life. And uh, I'll hate to see it go. It was different, and time moves on and things get bigger and all that, I understand all that. 
but it was a very intense place because of the intimacy. I think Stokely's going to be, in my opinion, forever remembered for the basketball, and especially the Ray Mears era, because it was such a big show at that time. That 20 years that Stokely, uh, that Stokely was there and housed the University of Tennessee basketball, there have been more All-Americans produced by the University of Tennessee than in any other time in history. You know, everything kind of runs its course sometimes, but still, I mean, it is hard to, to lose and think that that building's not going to be there, not be able to walk into it and remember what it felt like. It was a great, great place that a lot of people have fond memories about. The people that got to enjoy it while it was in its heyday, you know, got a, got a real bonus. And we were, played a role in, in providing that venue or, or a part of it, made it happen. Yeah, it makes it nice. There are just thousands and thousands that have such a warm feeling about Old Stokely. And it's all because of the events or things that happened to them personally there.